The entire superhero arc begins now. The manga begins in front of Blue How High School, starting with Trunks, Mai, and Krillin. Now, on the other side, we see Goten in some costume and a little chubby dweeb and some zombies in the back. This is chapter 88, Superheroes Are Born. It begins with two Saiyans, known as Goten and Trunks saving the day. Trunks' name is Saiyaman X1, and Gota name is Saiyaman X2. Enjoy this last colored panel, but I'm sorry there's none in color. Goten and Trunks fly over to the Jewelry District Mosquito Town West capital but their entrance was a bit dramatic because they flipped over a car now the two robbers are frozen and they say uh, what the the two heroes stand side by side and say it's bold of you to rob a jewelry store in broad daylight the robbers begin to get nervous and start to shake a little it, it, it's them how dare you wreck my ride like that you snot nosed wackos trunks dashes towards this robber and knocked him back with his right hand goten on the other hand is taking care of the other robber with a small bit of fire that represents these robbers hope and determination, they say they haven't beaten us yet. The two mighty heroes blitz towards them and kick them right in the stomach for being a nuisance. After taking critical damage from this kick, they still stand up and give it one more chance. The robber confidently pulled his gun right to Trunks' face. The robber is shocked as Trunks bends the gun with his bare hand. These are no ordinary robbers. Somehow these buffoons still have the power within them. They charge at Goten and Trunks with the incredible singing speed, but it's too easy for them. Finally, the fight is over. They give up. Cleanup complete. They quickly flee the scene so no one knows who helped solve the crime. Trunks is extremely happy. That went great, Goten. Yeah, it was perfect, Trunks. Just like the clean god himself. Goten gets a bulletin, aka text message, and it's a big theft. Trunks begins to smile because they know they get to save the day again. Goten says, no, it was a cyber attack, you dummy. We can't do anything. Trunks replies, a cyber attack? No! We can't beat these scumbags over the internet. I just want to face evil and beat them up with my style. Maybe there's no place for heroes like us in modern society. Goten's phone begins to ring. It's Chi Chi, Goten. What do you think you're doing? M -m Mom? You should have been home a while ago. R right away. I'll be there right now. Trunks gets mad at Goten because the way he transformed out of his costume is pathetic. Trunks thinks for a little and says we need some watches that could make us transform fast. And the first person he thinks of is Pilaf. Goten is confused but doesn't ask more about it. Trunks says lend me your costume. Sure, go ahead and take it. See you at school tomorrow. Trunks then flies off and stops at an alleyway to take his costume off. He looks around and sees his grandpa's here. Unfortunately, he got caught by his grandpa and says aren't you some mighty man or something. Trunks replies I mop up the evil in this world as Saiyaman X1. One of Dr. Brief Pets begins to lick trunks and he has no time to deal with this annoying creature and flies off. That was a close one and if I got caught by my mom then I'd be in huge trouble. Dr. Brief said that voice was awfully familiar but they continued to find a gift for a kindergarten, maybe an aircraft, a castle, and eh, these aren't so good. Suddenly Dr. Brief dinosaur pet thingy roared. What, what, what is it this time? Dr. Brief adjusts his glasses and says aren't those our helper bots? These bots are going on a rampage. Everyone is in shock and terrified and has no clue what's going on. The next day at Capsule Corp, Trunks says, Morning, Pilaf. How's my request going? Pilaf, working hard, says, Good morning, young master. One of them is done. Done already? Thanks. But some things are not adding up. It turns out Pilaf has a Dragon Ball, but Bulma doesn't know. Trunks says, sure, as long as you keep our superhero deal a secret. Pilaf replies, rest easy, nobody knows. Bulma creeping up on the two bozos and says, what might you two be conspiring about? Huh? Us conspiring? Nah. Bulma fiercely looks at Trunks and says, hmm, whatever it is, aren't you late for school? Trunks sees Mai holding a heavy box and says, that looks heavy for you. Let me help. He insists on having a conversation with Mai and she replies, with what? Trunks says, uh, uh, later. Trunks runs off and waves a goodbye. Peel off begins to sweat and Bulma says, have you ever heard of a security camera? What exactly do you mean? Bulma. Well, you stole my Dragon Balls from my room. She wants them back and with no hesitation, Pilaf agrees. Trunks speeding on his bike going through the town at max speed. He grabs a hot dog and flings his money at the worker. Finally, he makes it to Blue Hell High School. He finds his class, but he needs to sneak in without the teacher knowing. He throws his bag through the window and hops in. Trunks made it, but at what cost? Because he got caught. He gets a huge warning for his tardiness and accepts it. Trunks then rants about how he doesn't want to be the CEO of a corporation. 
separation. Finally, class ends and a girl comes up to Trunks and says, I hear you're looking for excitement. A little adventure? What do you mean? The girl replies, well, did you hear about the ghost? Trunks gets slightly nervous and says, huh, ghost? Then long story short, they mock him and say, if you want to check it out, but he refuses because honestly, he's scared of ghosts and ghouls. After school, he sees Goten and they hang out and best of all, they play video games like bros. It looks like they're consoles from the 1900s, but let's just ignore that. Trunks then flexes his new transformation costume, watch thingy he got from Peel Off. But they change the topic to Clean God movie. Trunks has two tickets and there's an issue. He doesn't want Goten to go with him. Yeah, honestly, our friend Trunks. Goten knew it was Mai, so Trunks ran off to ask her to go with him. He then talks about how cool it is and everything awesome about it. Mai said, no, I'm busy and I can't go. Suddenly, two robots come in and Trunks says, what's wrong with them? Pilaf replies and said they stopped obeying their owners. Pilaf knows for sure he didn't make any mistake, so someone has to be behind this. Trunks gets some information and prepares to hunt this person down, all for the sake of Mai. He then runs over to Goten House and says, it's Saiyan Man action time. They both creep through the neighborhood and look for this person. The conversation of ghosts comes up and Trunks rejects that he's scared of it until he bumps into some large man. He looks up and up and is terrified and begins to run away. He calms down and then found the enemy. He saw a remote control, so they have a feeling it has to do with that. Suddenly, that mysterious man drives away and drifts through his gateway. Goten and Trunks tail him, but their journey pauses for a bit. Trunks doesn't want to move, but Mai is in his head. He finally convinces himself to go after them. These robots appear to be making something in this factory. One of the zombies were looking and catch Goten and Trunks. Well, that's what it looked like. It appears that a few other students were there. Trunks won't let these students get hurt, so he wants to transform. He jumps out the window and kicks this dude arm. Everyone is shocked. One of the ghouls shout out and says, who the hell are you? Trunks replies, I'll have you know, I am. He gets cut off by a student. It's Sega Man X1. Everyone is happy, but Trunks said, next time, let me do my intro. Going back to the fight, it's a 1v5, and Trunks is easily beating all of them grabbing them by the arm and swinging them around. Finally getting to the last man, he charges at him to deliver a mighty punch. Unfortunately, this punch wasn't enough and the zombie says he's built differently. That's no issue. Trunks begins his tornado move and as he swings his arm, his costume machine thing breaks down. Luckily, Goten realizes and shoots a key blast at the power to shut the lights off. He then grabs the students and puts them in a private location. That was close to Trunks. The students ran off because of how hard haunted that house is. In the dark room, the zombies can't see Trunks, but he transformed into a Super Saiyan and the room brightened. The zombie looks at Trunks and says, what the hell are you? Allow me to introduce myself correctly this time. I am Seiyaban X1. Seconds later, zombies take a fatal blow by Trunks and it was the last of him. His energy level is gone. Trunks being an idiot knocked all of them out. So finding information will be hard. However, there's gotta be a clue. They found a safe and when they open it, they found something inside, something very important. But Trunks wants to bring it back to his home, but on their way in the forest, they see Krillin. Krillin does his normal police job and says, have you seen The Walking Dead? Trunks gets absolutely terrified and freaks out. Now, heading back over to that scene that just happened, some little guy with a lab coat walks in. He's upset, scared, and mad. He doesn't know what happened. Talk to me, Alpha number 12. One of his zombies tell him that their entire mini army has been defeated. How can this be? He needs to fix everyone up so so he heads over to the safe, but it was left open and empty. He begins to cry because his zombie lives were all taken away. He then finds a pin that says blue hell high school. Trunks returns to the factory Mai is working in and tells her that this Saturday about the movies, but gets cut off because she needs to fix broken bots. Apparently someone smashed these robots into bits, aka Trunks. Trunks slaps himself in the face for being an idiot because he lost his chance. Chapter 89, a rival appears. Trunks is sitting in his room trying to hack into what he found in the safe earlier. He can't figure it out, so he goes on his mom's computer and sees if that will work. There's no logic in this, but Bulma computer worked and he's in. He looks closely 
and says, the heck is this? Blueprints for some freaky creature? His computer started to freak out and he sees this little dweeb. Bulma walks in and he gets in trouble. However, that virus on the computer was an issue, so Bula came to save the day. Bulma tells Trunks, you're going to school with Mai, so don't be late. As they walk together, an interesting panel comes up. Bulma realized that it might seem unnatural and spark rumors if Mai appears to be Trunks' age, never attended school. Appears to be Trunks' age? What does that even mean? Then the tradition anime new transfer student gets introduced. Everybody likes her. Does she have a boyfriend? Is Trunks dating Mai? I think you get it. But another transfer student enters and he goes by the name Beta. Mai stares at him, but she feels something different from him. Finally, gym class begins and Trunks is destroying these kids in basketball. All the girls are cheering him on, but all all of his glory came to an end. Beta swipes the ball from him and blitz towards the rim. Trunks wasn't going to let this happen, so he swiftly catched up and goes for the block. He has a great attempt, but this new transfer student is something else. He scored on Trunks. He looks back and he mocks him. During this time, Trunks has been getting stalked. These bad guys think they found their enemy. The little dweeb tells his ghouls if that's the same person. They all try to remember, but they got knocked out pretty hard. Finally, he reveals his name and he goes by Hedel. There's no more wasting and he says hunt him down for me beta number one. Trunks tells Mai he wasn't even trying but she gets annoyed and she said be quiet look he's not even human. She says no I'm thinking he's more like an android. Trunks is a bit scared however he continues his day. Beta number one goal is to find out who Trunks really is. He throws a football at him but Trunks noticed and ducked down to tie his shoe. He calculated where the football would go and it worked in his favor. Attempt number two from beta he has a plate of food, but Trunks notices and catches it with his plate. The final attempt is dirty, but it fails again because Goten comes in. Being just like his father, an idiot, he picks up the car for the baseball. Hedo screams, I'll get the disc back! Beta instantly puts his costume on and he gets made fun of fast. <laughs> the irony coming from Goten. Goten's just standing there as he gets lectured by Beta, telling him that he will know Dr. Hedo and the whole world will. Beta goes for a quick dash and then punches but Goten reacts and dodges. He's asking for the disc, but Goten has no clue what he is talking about. His strength wasn't like the old ghouls. Trunks puts his costume on and he gets help from Goten. They talk and talk, and now they know Seiya Man X1 is who did everything. Trunks hands over his costume changer to Goten so he can join in. Beta tackles Trunks, but it was useless, and he smiles back. With a huge power kick from Trunks, Beta was launched on the football field. Dr. Hado is freaking out because he finds Trunks so cool, but he tells Beta to go old out. He enters his final form and shoots a missile right at Trunks, but he quickly redirects it to the water. The fight escalates rather quickly. After many punches and powerful kicks, one of the students gets hurt. It's Mai. As she falls on the ground, her back consists of the discs that they've been looking for. She attempts to run away with her grandma's speed, but she gets caught by Beta. Trunks is filled with anger and he dashes towards Beta, but he sends off eight missiles towards the school. He has no choice but to go back there and stop each and one of them. This gave enough time for Beta to take off. However, Goten enters the scene and stops the process pretty quickly. Trunks prepares his steam cleaner and lets out a high pressure. This attack landed and Beta falls from the sky as well as Mai. Trunks swoops her from the air before making contact with the floor. Then the fight ends, everyone is happy, hip hip hooray, but Trunks comes back and says, did I miss anything? Mai looks up at the sky. It's like some long forgotten feeling that just came back to me. Mai loves this idea of this whole Saiyaman, but before Trunks blows his identity, Goten comes in and stops him. But going over to Dr. Hedo's secret base, he's mad. I mean, how can one of his creations lose. Dr. Hado is mad, but he loves their costumes and even asked if they got their autograph. <laughs> but those Saiyamans are no more than wicked villains to him. On the bright side, he has targets now and he must get his disc back. There's only one thing to do next and that's to make new androids, something stronger and cooler. The final 
chapter 90 versus Dr. Hedo. Looking at this cover, it looks like a huge battle is about to begin. It starts off with Krillin roaming Cricket District and asking the civilians if he has seen these weird people. One of the civilians say, it's that shop right over there, officer. Krillin runs over to that shop and aggressively opens the door. He tells these zombies that he's an officer and he needs to ask them a few questions. Mai is in the scene, but she's not bothered. These zombies attempt to secretly walk away, but Krillin says, freeze! Heading over to Goten, he's on his Nimbus, listening to clack clack, bam bam. He finally gets on the bus and they have a little chat, but most importantly, this girl tells Goten if he can ask Trunks to go with her for this upcoming dance. Goten says he can't because he'll ask Mai to go with him. Suddenly, the bus stops and some man that looks like Elvis says he's beta number seven. He tells Goten to get out because he knows knows his true identity. He sneaks out the back window and puts his costume on. Goten goes for a kick and then transitions to a punch to lead him straight into a garbage container. Trunks hears about the dance and he goes and asks Mai, but she insists first that she wants to go with him actually. Now a very important detail comes up and it's a little ladybug thingy. You remember this thing for later. It turns out Clean God will be at this dance and Dr. Hedo is super excited. Trunks tells the news to Goten, but as Goten walks away, that little ladybug stung him. Mai is near Goten and tells him that they are being watched. They figured it out that it's that little bug from earlier. So that is how Andrews kept finding them. Mai will get her payback to Dr. Hedo. It turns out Mai only invited Trunks to dance just to take Dr. Hedo down. Finally, the dance begins and all the NPC activities start. When Trunks gives his belongings away, he tells the guy to be extra careful because it has an important disc. Mai shows up in some armor dress. On page 21, Goten asks if they will see Hedo. Mai says 100% and she will know from the photos. Trunks runs over to the front to get the best view of Clean God. Right beside him is Hedo. However, he doesn't know. They're having a great convo and bonding together and Mai suddenly screams and says Trunk stand aside! Krillin shows up and says Dr. Hedo you're under arrest for robbing bodies from the morgue. Trunks just noticed and Dr. Hedo uses his smoke launcher to get away. As Krillin runs outside he sees him on a quad driving full speed. Krillin says the best thing he can do is follow him to a secret base. Trunks is confused on why he was never told about the situation but he noticed they stole the bags. Now Mai yells at him and says Go, aren't you Saiyaman X1? Trunks didn't know that she knew already. Mai says, you're the only Trunks I've got in this world. The only Trunks you've got? <clears throat> didn't mean it like that. Trunks gets the motivation and says that he will take Dr. Hedo down and then he will actually ask Mai out for real. Mai says whatever, we can go on as many dates as you want. Goten and Trunks are ready to go, but as soon as they leave, Cleaner God, the poser, comes out and saves no one. Now. Goten and Trunks caught up to Krillin and they begin to follow Dr. Hedo. This is where the information gets juicy. The ring leader, Dr. Hedo, is actually Dr. Jero's grandson. He is a scientist that makes androids, so they are not sure if he is here for world domination. However, they are a nasty organization in the shadows. Trunks says, how nasty are we talking about? It turns out this group is the Red Ribbon Army from what Krillin is seeing. The Red Ribbon Army has a terrible rep. I mean, even the old days they wanted to take over the world, but Goku single-handedly stopped them. Krillin makes a great point. If the Red Ribbon Army and Hedo teamed up, we're looking for a real crisis. There's a good possibility it is related to that disc Trunks had. Trunks and Goten stop flying and they're super excited because this is what they've been looking for, to kick evil butt. They finally made it to Hedo's base. But one of the androids caught on and Dr. Hedo only response is to activate his last resorts. Trunks, Goten, and Krillin finally approached them, but Dr. Hedo had enough time to get his most powerful android, a dinosaur that is his most powerful creation, Dino Droid number one. The giant dino is no joke. He actually grabs Goten and then Trunks kicks him right in the face. Krillin gets angry, why you? And dashes straight for a powerful kick, but it was useless. The dino let out a weird key blast out of his mouth, but since he isn't intelligent, the dino goes on a rampage. He grabs 
grabs Goten and Trunks and slams Trunks right to the ground. And as he prepares to stomp on his face, Trunks shoots a powerful key blast right at his face. He gets behind him and he notices that the key blast didn't even work. Krillin uses his Destructo Disc and gets a huge slice on his neck. With the power of Goten and Trunks, this isn't much of a fight. With the power of Goten and Trunks, this isn't much of a fight. They blast this dino all the way up in the sky and to finish this off, they do a cyclone style tornado in a double hurricane to make this dino bodiless. Clean up complete. Dr. Hedo is being arrested by Krillin. Krillin opens the disc that was so meaningful to Hedo. It turns out it was just a photo of Hedo and Clean God together. They're all confused, but that's what the disc was the entire time. Dr. Hedo says, I've long since memorized the data anyway, so I discarded it. In any case, I never had the slightest interest in Dr. Jero's work. The disc was the ideal size for the photo, so I kept it safe in there until that boy stole it. Trunks replies and says, oh, okay then. This is coming to an end, so Dr. Hedo lets his mini army of androids return to their original family. Hedo charges were for stealing bodies at the morgue and using it in that shop. But he says something interesting and that he can continue his research anywhere. Once he gets a new lab, he can work from his current spot. After all, remember I said that little bug is important. Its name is Hachimaru. And that thing can do lots of wonder. Dr. Hado final words are giving up is not my style. Not when I've yet to create the ultimate android. The end. If you made it to the end, then I'll ask for a simple sub, please. You can unsub in the future. Also comment if I should do more videos like this. Peace.